I asked AI to create the ultimate day in Tokyo with a few caveats that we'll go over later and told me to start right here in Sugamo. It is currently just after 9 a.m. Also, all the police officers have helmets lately. And our first order of the day is over here. But as I walked up to it, I saw this temple. For as much as I truly love and appreciate the countryside of Japan, the juxtaposition between temples and shrines and the buildings, not to mention the fact that the shopping street they were about to hit is actually part of the old Nakasendo trail, that trail that connects all across Japan. I did a hike out there a couple years ago and to this day it is one of my favorite hikes, one of my favorite videos. That area is gorgeous. And while the majority of the Nakasendo now looks like this, just big old roads, every now and then you can zoom in to Google Maps and find little sections that are still marked with the old Nakasendo Trail. It's that underlying almost hidden history in the streets of Japan that keeps me in love and exploring this place even after a decade and a half because now knowing that this shopping street was once a part of the old Nakasendo Trail it just feels like there's so much more history in here than just a bunch of random shops. Which is great because I don't actually need to do much shopping and the majority of these shops aren't actually made for someone like me. Tokyo's broken down into these different areas with specific purposes. You'll get to see a lot of that today. And the area of Sugamo is known to be kind of tailored to, well, the elderly, the, the older generation. This little map here is a perfect example of just how many temples and shrines are hidden and dispersed throughout the area. They're probably not even all listed on that map either and this here i believe is koganji temple which is actually the next destination for our day and we've just ended up here incredibly early tokyo lens tokyo lens oh, yes thank you you're welcome <laughs> i'll check later that was adorable that little old lady saw me recording and asked if i was a youtuber and asked if she could follow the channel i love it so much one of the conditions that i worked into the ai prompt was to give a 30 minute buffer at the end of everything so that we'd have time to explore and hang out but i'm loving that it's already brought me to a space that i knew about but had never visited before it is a weekday morning right now and this area is actually considerably lively what? This shop right here is actually called Nihonji Akapanzu, Japan's number one red underwear store. There's an entire shop here just for red underwear. 100% not something that I was expecting to come across today, but I'm pretty sure I'm already over budget for the amount of time that I can spend in a store about red underwear, so let's keep moving. We're actually gonna head to our next location. ChatGPT gave me the station name, but not the route to get there. My, I live in, I know Tokyo, and even if you don't, you can just use Google Maps, but let's get going. Now we're in Ningyocho, which is kind of a traditional older area of Tokyo near Nihonbashi. The area literally means doll town and i asked chat gpt to give me a little bit of a budget for lunch and food and whatnot today and it recommended a restaurant that i've always wanted to go to that serves oyakodon literally chicken and egg and no no this is the pain this was it right here tamahide and it looks like it looks like it's coming back in 2024 in july but the whole building is just gone I knew we might run into a bump or two in the road today. I didn't want it to be this though. <laughs> I made a point of not pre-checking anything so that we could just kind of go with the flow. But I guess that means that now we need to have AI find us a new restaurant. It gave me sushi and I'm not really in the mood for sushi. So I'm going to say Tamahide was closed. Please give me an alternate Ningyocho restaurant to have Oyakodon. Because now I really want, I want Oyakodon. It gave me an address this time as well. Okay, Googling the alternate restaurant gave me nothing, so I put the address into Google Maps. I'm just gonna, gonna go see if it's even there. I feel like the AI might be messing with us when it comes to food. Okay, so not only does the restaurant not exist on Google, but the address leads us to this, this building. 
not a restaurant. But this kind of thing is also to be expected considering the fact that the AI is pulling a lot of its data from old sources and the pandemic did do some damage to Japan. So I don't really think I can trust AI for restaurants today. For now, let's just let's just find something in Ningyocho to eat. One of the challenges being that Ningyocho has a lot of office people in it, so I would rather not have to line up for lunch. Actually, this doesn't seem terrible. Oh, wow. actually nice. Okay, so the whole menu is in Japanese, but actually I'm gonna go with this right here, the Magurobutsu and Menchikatsu. Sounds really good. When I'm shooting videos, I tend to have way too much fun and just forget to eat or have meals at all, so I'm gonna enjoy this. What is this place even called? Seems like the shop is called Tohachi. I'm gonna enjoy this meal and then we'll get going again. Oh, so some of this stuff. Good lunch. And the weather just keeps getting worse. But forget the weather, we have more places to visit. I think our next stop here in Ningyocho is gonna be Sui Tengu Shrine. Very interesting how this entire shrine is up in its own encapsulated space on another level and how how have I never been here? Like I've lived in Tokyo for so long that I felt like I had seen it all and visited it all but I'm actually finding these, these little spots I have been missing out for years. Considering the multitude of overcrowded touristy shrines and spaces in Tokyo, Sui Tengu Shrine now goes very high on the recommendation list. That is nice and peaceful. It's just very interesting. Also, again, I just cannot express the happiness that walking down this street with the lanterns and the it's just it's a good area. Let's check out Amazaki Okocho and see what makes it noteworthy. So we've got a sweet and pastry shop here beside this shoe store that looks like they possibly haven't updated their stock since 1948. All jokes aside, I actually have an incredible amount of love and respect for shops like that. Places where you can still get the stuff that you don't think you can get anymore. For Does that... It's, it's made sense in my head. I'm getting the feeling that this Amazaki Yogocho may be best suited for weekends. And looking at our chat GPT plan, we still have at least two to three more areas to hit today. And there's an old beetle right there. But there's one very standard shop that I wanna hit here before we get to our next place, which I'm really looking forward to because the next two locations are actually really unique and kind of cool. And yes, it has started to spit and rain. It wasn't supposed to rain today. How? <laughs> oh, we'll make it work. We're gonna make it work. I don't feel like any big trip through Tokyo would be complete without at least one stop over at Daiso. So we're gonna head in and take a quick peek at what this Daiso has. Every Daiso is a little bit different and sometimes the local ones like this have really interesting items and as we do that we're gonna give some love to our sponsor NordVPN. You might already know NordVPN and you might even be using it but if you're new to VPNs and wondering what they can do the simplest answer is that they can make your computer or device look like it's well in another country or location. Now a lot of people use it this way to access content from different countries countries, for example, on their favorite streaming services. But I use it for two main things mainly. Number one, anytime I'm using public Wi-Fi in order to keep my data encrypted and keep me safe, especially at cafes and events, because public Wi-Fi is essentially like the Wild West without it. And number two, now that we're traveling again, using a VPN to make it look like you are booking from within the country that you're hoping to visit may even yield you cheaper flights and hotels. Now I use NordVPN on basically all of my devices, and if you want to give it a shot, you can go to my unique URL in the description box down below and use the code Tokyo Lens to get yourself a two-year plan with a huge discount and a bonus gift on top of that. NordVPN also has a 30-day money-back guarantee making it risk-free. That wraps up the sponsored segment. Thank you to NordVPN and back to our shopping. Also these D-Tracks things where you can put a marble and create like a whole path for it. This might be the coolest thing I think I've ever seen at Daiso. <laughs> This is amazing. I I want to spend way too much money on these. 
It just looked like so much fun. Okay, it is far too easy to spend an abundance of time in Daiso, and there was nothing really unique to this area in this one. I think we're still 30 minutes ahead, so let's head to our next area. Interesting side effect of this project is that I'm taking trains that I haven't taken in years. The Hibiya line, the Tozai line, all these metro trains. I kind of made that as one of the conditions. I wanted to keep everything directly to central Tokyo within the metro lines and the Yamanote line. That way we didn't have to go out anywhere really far and spend a ton of time on transportation. But I don't often take trains. I cycle around the city usually. So having the opportunity to get on these trains that I used to ride all the time is a little bit of a treat for me and I'm kind of loving it. Like. Kagurazaka now and our first stop is actually just right around the corner here. All right, so this over here is Akagi Shrine and we're gonna go there almost right away, but Kagurazaka has a ton of wonderful little shops, restaurants and cafes like this here. This little shop, we're not gonna go there right now, but they're just hidden and tucked into these spaces like this. And the area is absolutely wonderful for it. They're also selling these plates for like 50 and 100 yen and whatnot. This is, I love this area. It's been way too long since I've been here. Let's go check out the shrine. The last time that I came out to Kagurazaka was pre-pandemic and considering what an amazing area it is filled with hidden back streets and so let's not get ahead of ourselves. I don't know why it's been so long since I've come here but let's start by checking out the shrine a little bit first before getting into the adventure that is the area of Kagurazaka. Very similar to the Sui Tengu shrine, this is kind of up on its own area. There's this gorgeous space right over here, there's some Tori gates down here that we're gonna go check out. For anybody who's new to the channel, you might not know that I actually have a second channel just for live streaming, Tokyo Lens Explore. Kagurazaka is the perfect area. I'm gonna have to do that one really soon because this whole, honestly, this whole day has just made me wanna go to each one of these areas and do a full walk around live stream for Tokyo Lens Explorer. So if you're, just come check it out, come check it out. Well, we've got this down here and then, and then, then this, this is why I, I love, there's so much to explore today. Spots like this just make me feel like I'm running around in the world's biggest playground. Now chat GPT gave us two things. Number one, Akagi Shrine, and number two, the back streets of Kagurazaka, which I think at best we're gonna get a sampling of. It's one of those areas where you're really gonna get the feeling of being in Japan, being in, in Tokyo, but not the big building, tall Shinjuku, Tokyo. This is actually the technically the Shinjuku area, but it's not Shinjuku as you know it. It's well, it's it, it's this, and it's amazing. This should dump us out onto the main street right up here. So let's go take a peek and see how busy it is today. Right now, as I record, it is just before 4 p.m. right now. And I feel very much like the areas that we were before, considering that it's a weekday, this area is, this area is surprisingly, surprisingly busy. This is amazing. My first ever memories of hanging out in Tokyo were exactly like this, exploring little narrow back streets and old broken down houses like this that I'd never seen before. And I know that I keep repeating that this is amazing. It really is amazing to me. When I came up, that is so noisy and this, we're, we're having a conversation here, please. When I came up with the idea to do a day entirely decided by AI, my expectations were actually not that high, but so far this is turning out to be way more fun than I possibly could have expected. This may actually be a viable way to add some value to a trip to Japan that I had never thought of I guess never thought of it before because because it's new also this family mart seems to have some form of Pokemon drink and this sign over here says that they're an official Pokemon go partner what I wonder what that means I wonder if they have Pokemon cards they didn't have them and yes i'm collecting pokemon cards which is dangerous because i have adult money now so the adventure is just finding them because they are sold out everywhere in japan pokemon cards are not our goal for the day chat gpt still seems to have a lot more in store for us this isn't it this is just 
the temple here in Kagurazaka that I felt like walking through. It's been a nice walk. Let's keep exploring. The real beauty of almost any area of Tokyo is that if you get out of the main area, if you get off the main streets, which will almost always be busy, and you get into the back streets, the side streets, it gets really quiet comparatively, and it can feel like you have the city to yourself, especially if you do what I love to do and you explore areas first thing in the morning. Like this little hidden, I had no idea that this was here. And all this is, well, like this here, there's this beautiful Sento public bath area. Hi. I'm 100%, 100% coming back to Kagurazaka. Like soon. Like look at the tiny shrine. Kagurazaka is also known for its French restaurants and French culture. Some people call it the little Paris of Tokyo. But the area that we're heading to next, the entire area is almost like a giant shop dedicated to one specific type of item. And I'm pretty sure that we can walk there. This here is Yaskani Shrine. And while it wasn't on our itinerary for the day, it was just a hop, skip, and a jump down the road from Kagurazaka. And just, it blows my mind that something at this scale can exist right in the middle of a city as dense as Tokyo. And I love that. There's also a wonderful festival that happens here in the summer called Mitama Matsuri. I actually got to play Shamisen at that festival once. It was an absolute blast. And we are just down the road. This is the area of Jimbocho, which the entire area is basically one giant bookstore. Well, it's not, it's not one bookstore. It's an area full of bookstores. Take a peek at this store here. The entire outside wall is just lined with books all the way down. And I, it makes me wonder because they only have these tarps here. So do they... Do they leave it like this at night? What about rainy days? What about typhoons? What protect, I, I'm guessing they probably just close it up like this. <laughs> this, this is Jimbocho. This is the very first area that I stayed on my first night ever when I moved to Tokyo. I remember how fascinated I was by this area when I first arrived. Like you've got these here, like it's a dollar for that book. That book is a dollar. And in learning that, I subsequently learned that that's how a lot of Tokyo works. Areas broken down by theme. Like nearby, there's an entire area just for snowboarding and skiing equipment. Akihabara's all anime and games and everything like that. There are entire areas just for musical instruments. And <laughs> Sorry, I got wildly distracted by these books right here. A book for drunks. What? Literally says a booze book. What? What are we looking at? Interesting concept. It seems it is a collection of classic essays on alcohol from all ages and cultures selected by the author Junosuke Yoshiyuki. A book for drunks by drunks. There's actually quite a few shops with all their books outside. This one seems to have proper shutters and a security camera. This area gets busy on weekends though, like people everywhere. But even at its busiest, there's just something pure and beautiful about people who are all into something like, like books or anime or whatever it is. So in areas like this or Akihabara get crowded, it, it feels happy. Like a, <laughs> is it weird to say it feels like a celebration? Because it feels like a celebration. You could probably spend an entire day in this area and likely still not hit all the bookstores. And one of the other things that I love about the area is while a lot of the back streets are also populated with bookshops, you'll also find quiet little alleyways like this filled with little shops and restaurants and cafes. It's just a really peaceful area. And what's more is that it's literally just a 15, 20 minute walk down the road from Akihabara, the tech, gaming and anime central. And the juxtaposition between those two areas is Catchy 
KPT still has two things on the roster for us. Number one, dinner at a local Sobo restaurant, but truth be told, I'm still pretty full from lunch. That was a big meal. And number two, randomly ending the day in the area of Roppongi, which can be great if you go up to the Mori Towers, especially during sunset or blue hour. You get this breathtaking view of the city with Tokyo Tower contrasted against it in a glowing orange. It is lovely, it is wonderful, but the forecast is calling for rain sometime in the next 30 minutes, and something tells me that an open air rooftop is likely not as pleasant in the rain as it would be on a beautiful sunset but let me give you a peek at the prompt that I use so that you can play around with it and hopefully improve on it. Okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide over to the side we'll toss the prompt up here I give it a start time and end time there was a typo in there obviously I asked it to stick to central Tokyo giving me at least three different places I gave it a budget that it didn't really use and one of the big things that I focus on was hidden or unknown spots I probably could have done this better if I asked it to pull from Japanese blogs or something like that. But overall, I think we ended up with a pretty decent day. I would not have planned out a day like this for myself. The current version of ChatGPT is using information that only goes up to September of 2021, which is why we're running into issues with things like restaurants and whatnot. So this would be much better combined with Googling and whatnot. But for a day of just trying it out with no additional Googling, I think we had a pretty successful day. Also, I love that we ended up in non-touristy spots. It just feels like a really good starting point or a addition to kind of building a trip or finding stuff that you didn't know about for the past year or so. I've been working on a series over on Patreon about finding hidden spots and hidden gems like the ones that I often show in my videos, mostly focused in Japan. And I think that using ChatGPT alongside everything else that I'm doing in that series could really bring value. So there might now be uh, the number of episodes was already planned out and decided. We're halfway through them, but there, guys, there might be a new episode coming. This was a lot of fun, and I enjoyed so much just getting the chance to hang out and chat with you guys all day. I feel like it's been a little while since we've had a chance just to spend a day together and hang out and chat and do stuff like this, and I really, really loved it. Do you use ChatGPT? What did you think of this? How would you change the prompt? Even if you just want to say hello, I would love to see you in the comments down below. Regular other viewers know that I spend the first hour of pretty much every single video just hanging out and chatting in the comments and I read every comment on the channel so please leave me something let me know what you thought let me know what your prompt would be and I will see you guys again real soon And there are so many well these bags there are so many exciting little bags these ones are all empty